Okay, today's video is dealing with a problem with the power supply. My power supply has got a heartbeat. But that's not normal. <laughs> that's, and my scope appears to be having a bit of a problem as my, my, uh, my tray seems to be getting weak on this thing. So we may have to, uh, we may have to do a service video on my scope because that's cranked all the way up and I can barely see it. So I think my my scope has got a problem too. Anyway, this is a, a switching power supply. If we look over at the meter, we'll see what's going on here with this thing. This is supposed to be a 12 volts power supply, but as you can see, it's not regulating. So this is gonna be a demonstration as to how these things work, why they work, how they regulate, and uh, see if we can see what the problem with this particular unit is. Let's uh, first have an overview of how a switching power supply regulates. In order to service a switching power supply, one has to understand how they operate because they're different than a linear power supply. And I'm gonna try and draw it in block diagram here. So you've got several stages to your, your power supply. One, you do have a transformer with your primary and your secondary windings. But unlike a conventional power supply where your AC is applied to your power transformer, switching supply, that's all out the window. Uh, switching supply, your AC comes in and it goes through a, a, a bridge and you've got your positive and negative. So your AC goes into your AC input. And your, your AC is converted to DC. So there's your, your input capacitor. And this, I'm, and I'm gonna draw this in block diagram. This goes down into an oscillator block, an oscillator and an output block your positive and negative. So that'll have your, your transformer, or sorry, that'll have your, your transistor and your oscillator. This is your driver. And that connects to your, your transformer. Now this is, in, this is simplified. Your transformer, this is hot. So this is your hot side, and this is your cold side. Your transformer is referenced between the, the positive of the main filter and the hot ground. So this would be your hot ground side here. So we'll draw this as hot ground. Your cold side or your secondary side, again, it goes through your bridge rectifier. So into your AC input for that. Your DC output. Now this is now a reference to your cold ground. Your DC circuit doesn't just end there though. Okay, here's our one of our filters. Normally there's multiple filters. Your DC doesn't just go to the outside world though because there, there needs to be a reference to tell the oscillator whether it's on frequency or off it changes the duty cycle or changes the frequency depending on the design so we need a way of providing feedback and that's done through your your reference circuit so you take a sample of your dc with respect to ground and you generate an error voltage and now we have a component here called an opto isolator, an optocoupler. An optocoupler is basically a light emitting diode. And a phototransistor. So a phototransistor on this side, whoops, draw it this way, I should say. And your photo transistor goes back to your your driver and this is tied into your reference block 
So how it works is if your voltage is too high, it will cause the reference, which is typically just a resistor and a uh, zener diode in most cases, it will cause the LED to, that was weird, my stereo just made a thumping sound even though it's not turned on. Another thing to fix. It's turned off and the speakers just start making noise by themselves. Um, the voltage goes too high and it'll cause this LED to glow brighter, which will cause the phototransistor to conduct more, which will change the frequency of the oscillator or the duty cycle of the oscillator, which will cause the voltage to change. If the voltage goes too low, then the LED will glow dimmer, which will cause the current flow through the emitter collector junction of the phototransistor, part of the optocoupler, to decrease, which will change the frequency of or the duty cycle of the oscillator and cause the frequent cause the voltage to rise. That's simplified. Obviously, they're a lot more complex than that. So here is the power supply. And we'll explain the different components in this power supply. So here we have our main filter capacitor. We've got our bridge rectifier here. This is what converts, and this is not plugged in by the way, so I'm not too worried about getting a shock. We've got a bridge rectifier, so our AC comes in here. Yes, we have some, some uh, capacitors and chokes and stuff that this is to increase the power factor because these things are typically quite noisy and they can have a tendency to throw noise back onto the AC line. But this is our, our bridge rectifier and these components down here, these capacitors and a little coil down here and I think there's another little diode down here buried. Yeah, there's a little diode down there. This forms our oscillator as, as with this diode. Here is our output transistor. So this output transistor is just switching a nice square wave on and off. It passes through the transformer. The transformer is rectified. There should be a bridge rectifier. Oh yes, it's right here. <laughs> Staring me right in the face. Here's our, this is a double diode here. This is our, our rectifier for the, for the secondary side. So it's, it's basically two diodes in one package. And uh, filter capacitors, our output choke and our output uh, wires are connected here. And this little part here, this is the opto isolator. And you notice that the circuit board here has actually been cut, right? You see there's a slot there in the circuit board. That's to provide physical isolation to prevent any arc overs. So basically what happens is the sample is taken off of the, uh, the, the, the secondary side, and here it is right here. This is our voltage reference. That voltage reference is what drives this optocoupler, and the optocoupler is what provides feedback for the circuitry. So we know that we're not regulating because the voltage is going up and down. So we know we definitely have a problem. We know that the oscillator is working because if, if, we, if the oscillator wasn't working, we wouldn't have any output whatsoever. But we know that we have a problem probably somewhere, obviously the rectifier is working because we've got voltage. If this was shorted, we'd have no voltage. So we have a problem either in, in the feedback circuit somewhere here, either in the oscillator or in the optocoupler or in this little reference here. Now remember I told you that optocouplers are nothing more than a, an LED, a light emitting diode, and a phototransistor. Therefore, we can measure them because that's the one key component that controls the regulation. So we can measure this in diode test mode on our meter, just like we would measure uh, like a regular diode or a regular transistor. So how we can measure that is, first we can measure the transistor side, see if it's shorted, it should measure open, which it, it's measuring a little bit of resistance, but that's that's normal. It's not shorted, that's for sure. What we're seeing there is some of the other components. And we're seeing a normal voltage drop across this, which I wouldn't actually even expect to see that, but I, I'm not. it's not shorted. That's the, the, the transistor side, and I should see the same thing on the diode side. If I go to the diode side and measure it, I should have uh, conduction in the one direction only, which I don't. I have a short. And that's because the optocoupler, the photodiode side of the optocoupler is shorted. Let's remove it and replace it. So 
so there's our optocoupler. You can measure this thing again out of the circuit. This is the transistor side of it here that I'm measuring. And now it should, it should measure completely open both sides. It should measure open because See, I, I was getting a bit of a reading in one direction only there because um, of other components in the circuit. And now I go over to the, the diode side, which was the side that was measuring shorter before. And that's the side with the dot on it here. I'll just measure this one here. Okay, the diode is, is shot, it's dead shorted. So, I'm going to find another one of these things, as I'm sure I've got tons of them around here. I have multiple power supplies that I've stolen photo optocouplers out of. Let's find another one and put it in and see whether this thing uh, works. And then we'll try an experiment. I'll try actually shorting the, the transistor side to show you what would happen uh, if the transistor side were to short. But let me find a replacement first of all. Okay, I've got another optocoupler here. It's not the same number, but it should uh, it should be okay, I'm thinking. There's not much difference between these things, right? They all basically do the same the same thing. Okay, soldered that back in place. And we'll reconnect the meter. Put it in voltage mode. And we'll see whether it works. There we go. 11.59, a little low. It's supposed to be 12 volts, but it's working. And as you can see, now it's stable. And the reason why is because uh, regulation is taking place here in the optocoupler. Now, what would happen if I were to short the emitter collector side? Watch the voltage. I've now killed the feedback. So this is equivalent of the LED shining full brightness. And the power supply is thinking the voltage is too high and it's shutting down the voltage to its lowest setting. So now my voltage is low. As soon as I remove the short, the voltage comes back. So that's how you can tell if you've got a short on the, on the, uh, the, photo transistor side or one of these capacitors goes bad for example the voltage will be low if the uh, LED side shorts or goes open or if you lose your regulator over here your reference the voltage will go high now the reason that this thing didn't blow up was probably because like if I short the, um, the the diode side which is what was shorted before you'll see that the voltage will go up and it'll come down it's actually going into over voltage shutdown so it's pulsing off and on. The oscillator is pulsing off and on. So there's actually probably an overcurrent sensing device in here as well. Uh, or if the duty cycle goes too short or too long to, that causes the voltage to rise, the oscillator is now going into a free run mode where it's just pulsing. And, and typically that's how these things start. When they start from, from a, a cold, dead start, if I kill the, if I kill the, uh, uh, the, uh, the capacitors there, when they start, they start out by pulsing slowly until the voltage comes up until until the LED starts to, to uh, shine. So you'll see them and they'll come up momentarily. They'll go a little higher and then they'll cut off. And that way it's a safety device that's built into the, the oscillator network. That's to prevent in the, in the event that the optocoupler shorts like it did in this one. It's to prevent the power supply from ramping the voltage up so high that it will cause 
excessive voltage and cause your device to fail. Uh, that was an issue that Panasonic had way back where they uh, didn't have over voltage protection on a number of their VCRs and I'm thinking from the uh, mid 80s I guess when they first went to the uh, switching power supplies and we would get a VCR in. Well, the first one I saw, we didn't know what the hell happened. I opened up the top of this VCR. I thought it had been hit by lightning. I had no idea what was going on. All I remember is that there was chips that were blown into pieces, like the tops were blown off of ICs inside the set and it was a write-off. And I thought, what the hell happened here? Did this thing get hit with a power surge? We had no idea what went wrong with this thing. And uh, then I saw another one. And then I saw another one. And then I saw another one. And uh, we didn't know what the heck was going on at first until a service bulletin came out that warned us about failing capacitors in the, uh, in the switching power supplies. And it was in the primary side with some of the oscillator capacitors like down here. And uh, what was happening was they were, they were causing the frequency to shift up. And on the original design, they were set to operate below the resonant frequency. How these things work, or how a lot of them work, is it's a, it, they, they change the duty cycle or they change the frequency so they can do either. And how the Panasonic ones worked was they work on the basis that a transistor, or, or, sorry, a transformer becomes more efficient when it gets to the resonant frequency. So what they would do is they were operating them, the, say the resonant frequency was around 70 kilohertz, they were running them down at uh, they were running them down at maybe 60 kilohertz. And to increase the voltage, they would increase the frequency to 65 or 66 kilohertz. And to drop the, the voltage, they would decrease the frequency and take the transformer further away from resonance. And what was happening was as a couple small capacitors, they're like one microfarad, 160 volters, when they dried up, the natural oscillation frequency was going higher and higher. And even though the optocoupler was shining as bright as it possibly could, screaming, turn the voltage down, it's too high. It couldn't. And the voltage just kept going up higher and higher and higher. And you ended up with 20, 30 volts on the 12 volt rail. And all of a sudden parts started popping left, right and center, caps started blowing and it was a mess. And um, how Panasonic solved that problem was they put a, like a 15 volt Zener diode across the 12 volt rail so that if the voltage went too high, that diode would short and it would uh, kill everything. And then they changed the design and they moved the operating frequency higher than resonance and that would cause the transformer, as the frequency went up, the voltage would drop instead of going up. And that solved the multiple component failure syndrome that a lot of Panasonic VCRs had. Hope you enjoyed this look at this little cheap little power supply that uh, is used by many, many uh, devices, cable boxes, um, every, a lot of things that have external power supplies, they use ones very, very similar to this. Hope you enjoyed this quick look at this video. We'll catch it in our next video, which I haven't quite decided just yet. We'll catch you in the next one.